Hey everyone, I am Steve from GamersNexus.net and I'm joined by Patrick Stone, our hardware editor. And we're talking about HTC's Vive, which is also known as Valve's VR solution. And it is a product made by HTC, manufactured, designed, and Valve has contributed their own input and demands, including latency demands and software support. And they've also assisted in the development of the Lighthouse, which is the accompanying uh, laser, or IR, is it IR or laser now? It's, it, it is IR laser. Okay, so it shoots down beams <laughs> there you from go. the corners <laughs> of the room and basically scans the room, checks for presence of objects, walls, and the user. And then in the headset, which is all virtual reality, so you're not actually seeing the room, it draws, at least when I used it, it draws up walls when you approach the real walls to let you know that you should probably stop going that way. Yeah, it's called their chaperone system. That's the name they've given it. And it just you know helps you not to run into walls. Right, which yeah. is important. So we saw it at GDC, and we were not allowed to film at that time, but we got some film this time. And the experience was a little different. So I tried it at GDC. Patrick tried it here yep. and had a couple different games. The basic specs of the HTC Vive are it's got a 2160 by 1200 mm -hmm. display resolution, and that's using two displays at, uh, what was it, 1080 by 1200? Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. So 1080 by 1200 resolution for the two separate displays, one for each eye. Uh, there are lenses in there, just like Oculus and all the other VR solutions have their lensing technology. And it's got a couple of different uh, inputs and outputs. So you've got three plugs that matter, USB 3 for the data transmission to and from the PC, HDMI for audio video, yep. and then the third was power. You got to have power. power. Yeah. And then there is an audio jack as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's accompanied by two controllers, which I don't know a whole lot about because it's changed, I think, since I saw them. Okay. Yeah. So what's what's up with the controllers right now? What are they? So with the controllers, um, they're basically, uh, I guess you'd call them wands more than anything, um, and they have uh, photodiodes on them to interact with the base stations, uh, the Lighthouse base stations, and in addition to that, they actually communicate with the PC software, and they do that through little radio frequency wireless transmitters, and those radio frequency wireless transmitters are actually connected to radio frequency wireless transmitters that are plugged in currently to USB dongles that plug in on the headset. Uh, the engineer that we were working with, a guy named Levi, was saying, um, yeah, it's probably not going to be that way in the final product. You won't have little USB dongles hanging from your head, <laughs> but uh, th that's how it's working, and so that gives us a general idea of how the communication system works. Right, and the, the pipeline is basically it ships the signal from the system, from the PC. It goes down your audio, video, USB, all that that we just discussed, and then it's eventually output to the displays, mm -hmm. and at that point, you've got obviously latency concerns, which is a, a big issue that Oculus has had to ch tackle over the last few years. So the latency, did they ever give us a number on what the... No, they didn't give us a number, but uh, just from user experience, I mean, it was it was good stuff. It really was. It's fairly responsive. When I tried at GDC, I felt like for traditional gaming purposes, like uh, an FPS, for mm -hmm. example, you probably would not want to use this yeah. because it didn't yeah. seem like it was accurate enough and it not not quite that responsive right but for new experiences like there was a painting program mm -hmm. where you go in there and you can paint stuff in three dimensions it's really cool what were what was the you had a plane one or something yeah so i got to play a game where basically you had airplanes that were flying around and you had to literally walk through the land and grab the <laughs> airplanes and when you grabbed the airplanes you then directed them how to land and you had uh, a couple of different features like that where the, the interaction was, was me grabbing something and then slowly guiding it in somewhere so it wasn't like super rapid movement. And uh, I, I guess even just open space kind of stuff where um, there, was, there was this one sim where it was just kind of getting you familiar with the space and you were underwater and I think you got to do this one with the whale. Yeah, with the whale and it's actually... It from what I remember, it gets up pretty close to you. Yes. You're on like a sunken ship or something, yeah. right? Yeah, so you're on spooky. Like a, yeah, you're on like a sunken ship. You can go up to the railing, which in, in my demo was where around where the wall was. Mm -hmm. yep. So you can't really go past that physically anyway. And uh, the, the depth was very good. Very there's, good. There's multiple layers of depth, and you can 
definitely see the whale approaching or yeah. but but again uh no like super fast reaction needed so this is the right. kind of thing we're seeing right now so that there, there probably are some latency things they're still they're still working out but um to to that that regard um I, again i didn't feel like as i was moving around and interacting with the controllers that it was like click wait for something to happen and then move it was pretty much click happen um but if you're playing a first-person shooter where split seconds of shooting counts, Matter, yeah. then I could see a problem with that. And what was the the Dota demo is probably relevant. Yeah, since people like Dota. <laughs> so um, you guys might be familiar with the shopkeeper, right? And so they actually got you to go into the shopkeeper's place, and you got to interact with a lot of objects there. And my personal favorite, there was a little dragon sitting in the corner, and he had like a fish in his mouth, and he would just kind of hop around, and you could. You could just poke at him, and he would hop around and back up. But uh, uh, the man, talk about wanting to go into a game and like be fully immersed in a game. That was the experience that was going on here. So pr pretty impressive uh, from from my point of view at this later stage of development. I, I think the technology is very impressive. The use cases and implementations are going to be a challenge. I talked about this in the first article, where you basically require either an empty room or a large space you can dedicate to this so yeah. it's not something everyone can have if you're like cramped in an apartment already or something good point because you do need space for the lighthouses to be in the corners of the room and to not trip over stuff and run into walls because this is a fully uh you you see nothing of the outside yep so technologically i, I know that the the refresh rate is 90 hertz yep on the two screens and you spoke to Levi, was it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you heard a lot more about the tech than I did. What's, what's stuff that people should know? Um, so the, the tech's pretty cool in that uh, one of the things they did that allows them to, to push these high resolution images at high re refresh rates is that, you know, that they are using HDMI and that allows the data to come across quickly. So there is this the, the idea that you're walking around with a cord tagged onto the back <laughs> of your head, and I think it's going to stay that way uh, in the early development. The Levi and us uh, also talked about the possibility of wireless in the future, and he said, don't count on it, um, but don't count it out either. So uh, looking at some of the other parts, uh, we've already talked about the HDMI, we've already talked about the power, we've already talked about the USB, and we've talked about the controllers and how the controllers are linked wirelessly via USB dongles. Um, but what we haven't gone into a lot of detail is uh, the sound. Um, and we actually talked about a, a pretty cool concept. Uh, currently, what they want to do with sound is they want to have the HDMI deliver the audio to the headset. And then on the headset is a 3.5 millimeter stereo jack. You plug it in about right there. And then you can use a nice set of, um, you know, I don't real know, headphones. Yeah, real like headphones, right? Some, some gaming headphones. And you put them on, and then again, you're immersed. But uh, another idea would be to use a fully configured surround sound system. And the advantage of doing something like that would be that you could still hear outside real world sounds. Like, right. so <laughs> if somebody was in need of your help and you needed to quit playing a game, you could actually hear them. <laughs> Whereas with headphones on, you may not hear them. That is a legitimate use case concern, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we've talked about how the information is delivered to the system, how it delivers it to you, but how does the system know where you are? Right. You know? So, uh, we talked about not running into walls. Yeah. Systems got to know where the walls are. So this was where the lighthouse base stations come in. The lighthouse base stations are um, infrared laser, tr uh, I guess you could call them transmitters, and they kind of shoot a, a beam pattern down at the floor, and it goes uh, left and right on a rotor, and it goes up and down on a rotor. And so you've got one from one corner, and then one from the opposing corner. And the reason they right. did that, he explained this to me, was that let's say you, you turn around and then all of the photo diodes that are on the headset and that are on the controllers, if you turn around, let's say your back's, your back's facing me and you got one of your lighthouse space stations shooting this way, they can't see into the photo diodes. So, so that's why the other one's it's in occluded. play. Yeah. yeah, you got it. Um, and so uh, it, it, it uses these base stations in uh, the way Levi explained it was like a GPS-like approach. The base stations don't talk to the system in, in any way. All they do is they just project lasers. Uh, and so like in GPS, we don't ever talk to the satellites, Satellite. but the satellites do send signals down. And so uh, it, it's, a, it's a system that allows the 
uh, headset to keep up with where it is based on these lasers. All right, so it, you know, with these Lighthouse base stations, um, one of the cool things is that uh, we were told that if you wanted to make a bigger room or a hallway, you could do that. You could just add Lighthouse base stations and then you could theoretically just keep tiling them out. So it's like tile, 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 and you just keep getting bigger. Well, the problem with that, the limitations that we have right now, is you'd have to have like a really long HDMI cord, a really long power cord, a really long USB cord. And uh, some of you guys might know. signal only goes so far. Yeah, you get signal degradation, exactly right. Um, and then, then some people were like, well, let's just do it all wirelessly. And the problem with wireless is bandwidth right now. We currently don't have the bandwidth to send a really nice high definition video signal uh, over wireless. So uh, some people have been like, hey, well, let's just strap a PC to our back then. Yeah. Well, then you got heat and battery issues too. So, but hey, there's engineers, people like fun stuff. Maybe it'll get developed in the end. Right. So speaking of development, the original target I was told was 2015. Yeah. It sounds like that's only an initial run now, and then the rest is 2016. Yep, that's the mental. So that's uh, that's competing with Oculus and some other solutions, but that is what the target date looks like. I was not told a price for you. No, didn't get any prices yet. So no price yet, still kind of nebulous there, but we will keep everyone updated via the website, gamersnexus.net, and of course check back on the YouTube channel. And if you like this kind of content, if you like the technical detail, then do check out our Patreon page, which is in the post-roll video li linked there. So that, that's all for the HTC Vive. Hit the link in the description below for the full article, all the other technical stuff we didn't get into here, and we will see you all next time.